Hi there. Uh, welcome to this quick start video for using Unify. Unify basically makes it a lot easier to build AI apps and specifically to build custom uh, dashboards and custom observability pipelines to see whatever data matters to you and to interact with that data in a very flexible manner. So you can think of it as being a bit like Notion for AI observability, being very hackable, very composable and easy to build your own kind of uh, pipelines. Uh, but rather than explaining it, uh, let's actually go through it with a minimal example. So in this example, we're gonna be running an evaluation to get an AI agent to perform better. So showing how you can use uh, a custom interface for doing your evals. So let's dive in. Let's first import Unify, add some other imports as well. This is using our Python client, um, as, as you can see. Uh, we then have, um, activate our maths assistant project. So this will also create the project for us behind the scenes. We set the context to evals. You can think of context as being any container for your data. So you can have as many contexts as you want. In this um, case, we're going to have an evaluation context that we're calling evals. Uh, let's then go ahead and create an AI client. So we're going to be using O3 Mini from OpenAI. We're going to add tracing so that we can trace every single uh, function uh, call to O3 Mini, and we can see all of the inputs and all of the outputs. We're then going to set the system message to say, you are a helpful math assistant tasked with adding and subtracting integers. So clearly a very hard task where we're giving the agent here. Um, we're going to create a test set with random uh, numbers between zero and 100 that need to be added or subtracted from one another and uh, have a test set of 10. Uh, we then have this evaluate response function that takes in the question and the response, basically gets the mathematically correct answer, passes the integer from the LM response and verifies that they're the same. Um, otherwise, if we can't pass it, we give zero or if they're not the same, we give zero. Oops. Um, so then what we do is we have this function that basically uh, takes the response from the agent and passes that into our evaluate function and then logs the logs the result. So logs whether it uh, logs the question, the response and the score. And then we take this evaluate function and, and this uh, trace decorator means that the evaluate function, all of the inputs and outputs from this are also going to be fully traced into the platform. And then basically we take with this experiment context, which kind of automatically um, gives the experiment a name. Um, we actually let's actually give it an explicit name in this case though. Let's call it helpful assistant. Um, and then we basically map um, the evaluate function across our 10 questions. This just uses multi-threading so it runs in parallel. Um, yeah, so pretty pretty simple kind of um, evaluation a script for evaluating how well our AI agent is performing. Uh, let's go ahead and run it and see how it does in the platform. Okay, great, so that's completed. So now let's go and open this up in the platform. So let we go to uh, unify.ai. Of course, you can bookmark this. Let's go to our account, then interfaces, and then let's uh, go on to Maths Assistant. Okay, and that's loaded in by default. We can see all the data here. We see that um, three of them struggled, so I'm not sure why that is. Let's take a look. We can also make our um, table a bit smaller and make the view pane a bit bigger, like so. So let's take a look at this failure. Why is that going wrong? Let's take a look. We don't see the trace right now. We can obviously use this to look at all of the code for all of the functions um, and the LLM call and see the inputs to the LLM and so on. But for now, let's just take a look at the question, response and score. Um, so it looks like here the response is actually correct, um, but we're still getting a score of zero because our evaluate function isn't passing it correctly. Um, so that seems to be the problem here. It seems to be the same here as well um, and here as well. Um, by the looks of it. Um, so it seems as though we're not able to pass negative numbers um, and that's not working correctly. So let's now go take another look at the um, at the code. Okay, so it looks like um, probably what's happening. Okay, so we, we get it if um, C is a digit, but let's say if C is a digit or C equals minus sign, that's gonna mean that we can actually pass this correctly. Um, I'll just put them in brackets to make sure there's no confusion there. So if C is a digit or C is a minus sign, then we're going to basically get this, cast it to an integer, and then we should then be able to detect these uh, negative signs that we've been missing last time. Um, so now let's uh, call this experiment a uh, fixed evaluate, evaluator, let's say, um, and run this again. Okay, great. So now let's come back to the console. Let's full screen this and let's uh, add in the latest data. Okay, and we can see now it's been, we've got it all working. What we can then do, for example, is group by the experiment. 
And what we can then see, let's make the table a bit bigger again, just so we can get all of these in. Um, so what we get here is the uh, average score here was 0 0.7, and then we, it was one in this case. Uh, the green color shows that it's a reduction metric. So in this case, we're getting the mean value. Uh, and then blue means it's a shared value. So actually all of them have the same value in this case, being a score of one. So we don't need a reduction in this case. It's all the same across all of them. We can then look at the data from one particular experiment by unfolding like so. And same for the other experiment too. And this can be useful to get an experiment perspective on what we've run. But let's say that actually we've run many experiments and there's one test case that's very problematic. Well, in that case, we can ungroup by the experiment and then group by the question, for example, like so. And then what we can see is for which questions we got the same result every time across all experiments, which ones we got a difference um, for the different experiments, and also which ones had the same response every single time. In this case, both of them, the agent gave exactly the same response. Uh, so this can be very useful to really just perturb the data in whatever way makes sense. Maybe you want to look at one experiment or you want to look at one example in your test set or one particular version of your system prompt across all of the experiments that had that version of the system prompt. And therefore the ability to take any of these columns and put that as the base of your kind of nested representation makes it very easy to answer all kinds of questions about your experiments. So a very simple tour example for now, but hopefully uh, the, the idea comes across. Okay, so we've got our app working perfectly. We have an agent that can add and subtract numbers. Uh, AGI is around the corner. Uh, now let's um, assume that we've deployed this app and we're now testing out different models and providers to try to get the fastest. So this script here just uh, actually synthetically generates that data and then we'll take a look at how we can plot it. But we've just added some um, hypothetical model speeds and provider speeds. We're going to um, add this to our contexts, uh, uh, to our benchmarks context. And now we're just going to go through um, for 25 time steps and add random speed observations that take the model speed, provider speed, and add some noise to it as well. And we just have the model Model, the provider, the time, and the speed. So these four items we're logging in a very simple way based on this very simple toy, toy data. So let's go ahead and run that to generate our synthetic data. Okay, that's completed. So let's open up our interface again. Um, so obviously we had the evals that we ran last time. Let's actually go ahead and call this tab evals just so that's nicely organized. Okay, and let's create a new tab and call this new tab uh, benchmarks or just benchmark like so. Okay, and then let's set the context of this to be benchmarks. And then we have the data that we plotted here on the left. Uh, so let's say we want to make a plot of this data. Well, what we can do is we can go ahead and um, set this to be a plot. Let's set a line graph. And let's go ahead and select the x-axis here to be uh, time. And then the y-axis to be speed. And then let's group by the model so we can get the uh, the speed performance of all the different models. Okay, great. Well, what if we actually want to see the speeds of all the different providers? There's actually three different models and three different providers. And this is kind of aggregating all the data for each of the models across all providers. So let's actually quickly create a new uh, endpoint to specify that. A new column, sorry, let's call it endpoint. And let's literally just do model plus provider. Let's actually do it like model plus at oh at provider like this and then it's going to be like you know model at together ai or something like this so that looks like that's good so let's add this new column okay great that's been added we've got our endpoint column let's then go and group by this column instead like so okay great and now we have a unique plot for each of these six different endpoints uh, and we just were able to do that even though we didn't log this unique um, endpoint as part of the data we were able to create a derived column that then has a unique value for each endpoint group by that and then we can get this data plotting and it just took us a few seconds um, so these are just a couple of examples of the kind of things you can do we now have an evals page for running our evaluations we have a benchmarks page for running our live production um, traffic on different models and seeing which is the fastest and this is just scratching the surface of what you can do really uh, unified interfaces are very hackable composable tiles you can obviously kind of you know reshape these tiles to be whatever size you want you can move them around you can add as many new tiles as you want um, for plots views and tables so there's really no end of what you can do um, if you want to get deeper, then obviously just go check out the docs and you'll be able to see um, see lots of other examples. But hopefully this has given a bit of a flavor. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'm really excited to see what everybody does uh, with this. And um, yeah, see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.